Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso right here on SABC3. It's your Health Tuesday. Now, according to the inaugural report on the global oral disease burden from the World Health Organization, South African children are at greatest risk of oral health challenges with 41% of children aged 1 to 9 years with untreated tooth decay. Now, here to chat more about this report and oral health in general are Drs. John van Lierop, who is the chairman of the Scientific Committee for the SADA National Congress and Dr. Corne Smith, who is president of the South African Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry. Now, at least 28% of children aged five years and over experienced untreated tooth decay in deciduous and permanent teeth, respectively, while nearly 25% of those aged 15 years and above experienced severe gum disease in 2019. Doctors, thank you very much to your Feel Good Breakfast show this morning. I'm glad we're talking about it. Our teeth. You know, we spoke about issues like balding as well, which could also have a huge <laughs> effect on people from a from a from a from a uh, um, self-esteem point of view, but teeth as well. And we know. Mm. Now, yeah, I, I can see there's a lot that you guys <laughs> want to say. But I think let's talk about John about the statistics from yeah, the it, WHO. Why why is it so bad? It's actually quite scary if we think about uh, generally oral health is probably the most widespread non-communicable disease in the world affecting close to half of the world's population. That's three and a half billion people a lot. that have some kind of oral disease. And sadly, it affects mostly the vulnerable and the marginalized and, and the poorer parts of society. And so it becomes really a societal problem. Mm. And, and it's our role as society in general, and obviously our profession, uh, me and, and my colleagues, our role is to try and see how we can help, how we can diagnose early, how we can support those people, how we can get to treat those people uh, early on so that all those common diseases that we see, that we can really get on top of those as soon as possible. Well, on that note, what are some of the common oral diseases, Dr. Quine? Well, I mean, it's why we go to the dentist. It's when you have a little cavity, so that's yeah. tooth decay. And we see that in baby teeth in deciduous teeth, and then also in adult teeth. It's just normal caries. And then obviously gum disease. So those are the two main okay. ones. And then the, another one that really plays a big role is oral cancers. Okay, so oral cancer is a big mm. one as well. Now in general, Dr. Jean, how does one go about ensuring good oral health? I mean, you'd think we'd know, <laughs> but, but the statistics suggest otherwise. That is, that is the sad part. Um, like Corne was saying now about all the things that, that can go wrong. Um, it's so simple and easy for us to, to prevent that. Um, and it comes back down to a few basic things, which is just simply taking care. It's, it's preventative measures, routine brushing your teeth and flossing. It's, it's really as simple as that. Uh, things like a good balanced diet. I love the way you just baked a chocolate cake. If we're gearing up for you, just saying. <laughs> so, okay, let's set this up yeah, properly. The, the worst thing a dentist wants to see when he walks into the studio. No, look, for, for me, it, I love chocolate. I absolutely love chocolate. And, and it's not and all it's, flavors, it's not, There's nothing wrong with it, and, and I enjoy it. But together with that, you have to have yeah. a balanced diet. And then, obviously, it's, it's visiting uh, a professional oral health care um, to really help diagnose and catch things early. And yeah. I remind myself, and, you know, if, if you look at a road, okay, and, and you look at the, all the potholes that we see all over the country, yeah. if you take a beautiful, clean road and you maintain it and you clean it and you fix the holes as they come up and you patch those little things, when the rains come, they don't erode. Yeah. And and they they stay better for much longer. And you right. don't have those scenes where you have uh, people having a, a <laughs> swim in the middle of the road because of the size <laughs> yeah. of the potholes. That's exactly what it is. Exactly. It's really just maintaining things and taking care yeah. of, of what you have. Just basic yeah. good oral hygiene. Basic. But diet, like you said, plays a big role. Gunnar, mm -hmm. uh, I want to ask you, we spoke about oral diseases, the common ones. I mean, we're talking about the teeth, the gums, which has got yeah. such a heavy blood supply in the body as well. Can it lead to any other diseases if left untreated? I think it's, it's extremely interesting if you start looking at the link between your oral health and your systemic health. And there's been vast amounts of research done where we can see there's a clear link. Yeah. So having cavities is, is probably shown as one of the incidences that we see in a whole lot of other diseases. So it's not necessarily the cause, but we see this prevalent in people with other diseases. 
Where we see a clear link, though, is in things like diabetes. Oh, really? So when you have gum disease, there's a, there's a definite link to diabetes. And then also cardiovascular disease, so heart conditions. Right. So if you think of, obviously, a blood-borne bacteria that can literally be carried through the gum, inside your bloodstream, to your heart. So, I mean, that, you know, becomes a little bit scary and a little well, bit dark yeah. if, we, if we look at that. But there is some clear evidence to show that when we take care of our, our mouths and our yeah. teeth, we also take care of our, the rest of our body. I think all of our viewers just spent to brush their teeth right now after hearing <laughs> all of that. Listen, thank you very much, doctors. We're going to be back with you guys in just a second. Oral health, vitally important. This goes much be or far beyond just brushing your teeth. We're going to continue that discussion just after this. It's my feel good Studio Health Tuesday on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Welcome back. Now, we are continuing our chat about oral health with Dr. Jean van Leerop, who is the chairman of the Scientific Committee for the SADA National Congress, and Dr. Cornet Smith, who is president of the South African <laughs> Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry. Now, a recent report by the WHO shows that about 3.5 billion people out of about 8 billion people across the globe are affected by oral disease. Hence, it's so important we talk about this. Doctors, welcome back. Um, I love it. All the health talks this morning. I'm still trying to catch my breath after that uh, rather <laughs> crazy TikTok challenge. World uh, Oral Health Day. Uh, it was observed last week. Now, this is a day set aside to raise awareness around oral health. Obviously, why do you feel that this is needed, even today still? Oh, completely. Are you okay? I'm, I'm, I'm watch okay. It. I'm very glad it's you, not me. <laughs> Thank I, you, Anna. I, I still can feel a bit of burn, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm good. No, it's, it's great. Um, so Oral Health Day specifically, I, for me, I, I honestly believe that, that oral health generally is completely undervalued in society. I don't think we uh, really respect and understand how important it is in our general lives. And, and it's only when you have toothache or you lose a tooth or you then have you problems, then you're like, oh dear, it's, it's so important and you miss it. Yeah. It's like when you miss it when it's gone. Um, and that is why a day like World Oral Health Day is so important. It just kind of helps us to sharpen our focus so that we can just be aware and just think about all those things that we take for granted in our oral health yeah. generally itself. And then also just to take a moment to, as, as a community, as a society, just to think about and brainstorm about how we can really bring um, oral health to the general community and to society as a whole. It comes down to education, and we spoke yeah. about it off exactly. air, you know, being, being a parent. I have to hammer it for my two boys. Have you brushed your teeth? Have you cleaned it? Have you brushed for long enough? You know, it's a consistent <laughs> reminder, and this is also, you know, you know what I'm saying. Oh, you know, it is, it is what it is. Yes. Um, but we are also focusing on oral disease. Now, what signs should we look out for if you suspect maybe, maybe I have an oral disease? I mean, where do we even start? Well, our bodies are amazing at giving us these warning signs, mm. you know. So the first one is quite obvious. When you have pain, that's a, it's a very obvious sign that you should go to the dentist. Yeah. Um, but then there's more subtle little things like maybe swollen gums, um, bleeding gums, discomfort when you're chewing on something. Um, I, I always find it very interesting when people come to us and they, they say that they have bleeding gums and they think that they should stop flossing, whereas the now bleeding the gums <laughs> is actually <laughs> the reason why you should floss even more. Yeah, so because people will notice, especially when you brush teeth and you might have a little bit of blood when you, you know, rinse the mouth out. Yes. It just means that you are cleaning and you should continue doing so. You should, exactly. and your gums are actually irritated. That's yeah. why the bleeding is telling us there's, yeah, something, there's wrong. something going on. Yeah. You mentioned food, the importance of food earlier on. And we know that food and what you eat, I mean, in all aspects of our, our health and lives, it is important. But why specifically for your teeth? How does it affect it? Um, like we said, when you start, you just bake the chocolate cake before the dental segment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how, how That's why we have you here after like, that really? segment, you see. No, and, and it's the common thing. We kind of, yeah. uh, like your kids, you warn your kids, uh, don't eat so many sweets, your yeah. teeth are going to fall out. And then you... Think about of, Charlie and the chocolate factory. Exactly. You see what it's, I'm saying. It's, it's kind of those things. But then do you, do you think about how much sugar is in your cornflakes? You know, how much sugar sugars. is, all the things that are kind of hiding around. So, so when you talk about general health and, and diet, it's, it's really about uh, just having a balanced, li a balanced life with less processed foods. Mm -hmm. But it's not just what you eat, 
for me, it's, it's massive impact is what you drink, what you consume, you know, through, through liquid. Um, and one of the biggest problems we're facing now is the impact that fizzy drinks, carbonated, carbonated drinks have uh, on the oral environment. And I'm not going to mention names, but we all know, you know, there's a little hands like, yeah, drinks. we know carbonated drinks. And, and we used to, as kids, you used to kind of drop a coin into a glass and you kind of watch it dissolve. <laughs> yeah. And we you look, look at that. <laughs> and that basically is, is what happens in your mouth. So that acid that's built up in that liquid sits in your mouth, sits on your teeth, and it slowly erodes all the enamel, that protective uh, coat that's on the tooth, and erodes it away and it, and it disappears. Yeah. Which is why today, uh, in the past 10, 20 years or so, our erosion of teeth is completely one of the biggest problems facing first world countries yeah. uh, as we speak today. All right. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, getting the mental picture there. Thank you very much. Please don't go anywhere because I still want to cover the, the question of, you know, things change. We do mm. know this. But how often should you go and visit your dentist? Mm -hmm. We want to hear your advice. Stick around. But if you have any questions at home about oral health, please send us a voice note. Connect with us. 63 Let's get some music. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express, all right here on S3. Now we are wrapping our chat about oral health with Dr. Jean van Lierop, who is the chairman of the Scientific Committee for the Sardar National Congress, and Dr. Corne Smith, who is president of the South African Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry. Now, 75% of people suffering from oral disease live in low- and middle-income countries, according to a new study by the World Health Organization. Doctors, welcome back. I'm loving our chats this morning. Just to link on to our previous chat, Dr. Corne, how often should we visit the dentist? Because I think this could be a controversial issue. I mean, if you look at what, what we, we kind of told as we grow up, most people go to the dentist once a year. But I think that if you have more problems, if you're someone that's prone to decay or cavities, then you might actually want to go every six months. Okay. And don't forget about the oral hygienist. That's it. I think it's such a powerful thing that we often neglect is to just go for go regular for cleanings. Yeah. The oral hygienists are so well trained they will pick up little things even before you see the dentist. All right. So, so once a year to the dentist, twice a year to the oral, oral hygienist. Oral hygienist, lovely. We had a question from one of our viewers, Nicole, mm. around braces. Let's hear quickly. Good morning, guys. I just want to know why does one have sensitivity after having braces? <laughs> okay, well, okay. There's, a, there's a question yes. for you guys. Yeah. Why do we have sensitivity? <laughs> okay, well, if we look at what happens when we have braces, is that our teeth are moving. Yeah. Which in itself is not a comfortable thing. So the moment your teeth starts moving, there's a little ligament around the tooth that actually keeps it in place. And that ligament has millions of nerve endings. So as the teeth start moving, the ligament gets a little irritated and we have sensitivity. Yeah, and sensitivity on the tooth itself, like if we talk that's about, it. you know, cold and hot, those kind of things. Yeah. So that is exact. That. that's related to, to okay. the movements of the teeth. Interesting. Yes. Nicole, I hope that answered your question. I remember I had braces as well, and it, you know, as, as happy as I am for it, uh, it wasn't the most pleasant experience because yeah. it's quite, it quite hectic. Um, let's continue our discussion. South Africa has about 1,933 new cases, Dr. Jean, of lip and oral cam uh, cavity cancer, and that was in 20. 20. Um, how, how are these diagnosed and, and addressed? Um, it's exactly like Corno was saying earlier. It's, it's about your routine, routine screening. So by going to a dental professional, whether it be the dentist or the hygienist, we are trained to be able to notice those little changes, those little nuances, those little things that isn't just quite right. And then we'll be able to, we work in the team with specialists and other colleagues, and we're able to then, through that system, be able to diagnose effectively what is actually going on and then uh, build a real treatment plan and kind of a, of a way that we'll be able to deal with it. So it really comes down to early, early diagnosis, oh. which is part of your routine checkups exactly. that you go through once a year or once every and now we realize how important those visits to the dentist yeah. is because like i said early detection it's another shocking statistics uh south africa they're 1.1 dentists per 10,000 people and that was in 2019 global average is 3.28 per, yeah. uh, per 10,000 why are we seeing these low numbers Corne? 
I mean, I think it's really, it's based on where our dentists come from. So how many dentists are we qualifying each year? That's probably one of the first places that we can look at. But it's kind of a tricky question. You know, I was thinking, why do we have, um, yeah. you know, such a low amount of dentists in South Africa? And I also, I think maybe it's related to how expensive it is to set up a dental practice. Mm. Um, we should probably roll the focus on primary care, a primary prevention, preventative care in, in dentistry and, and mm. as, a, as a country and not necessarily just, you know, private, private practices. Yeah. Um, so I think if we, if we rather focus on that prevention, right. Um, that, that's where the dentist can yeah. really make a difference. Let's talk about that prevention. It starts from a young age. We spoke about it, we touched on it with, with children, uh, Dr. Jean. The, the oral treatment and, 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 and health of our teeth, mm. how does it differ as we go older? Should it differ, especially if you take a look at kids with the little milk teeth um, and making sure that they get that routine down? And, and does it change later on? You, you, you were just speaking um, off here earlier about your kids and your experience with your kids, and and I have two teenagers, and I promise I'm not going to mention their name, but, but uh, Joshua <laughs> and Emily, um, they, they, you know, have been through the same troubles that all parents go through. It's kind of, have you brushed your teeth? Are you doing it properly? Yeah. And I remember um, listening to the electric toothbrush. Uh, noises in the bathroom, kind of walking down the passage, all proud as a dad, thinking, yo, oh, I'm a dentist, my kids are brushing their teeth. <laughs> and there's, there's my son watching YouTube clips and the toothbrush is going off oh, next to him. Oh, oh, oh. You know, that kind of... Caught that kind out. of it's, it's, Seriously. But, but the, the, the essence of it really is about effective cleaning and, and it's about us teaching our children how to really be effective um, in how they clean and, and just to stay on top of it and mm. be adamant. They have to do it. Yeah. It is so, so important in their normal development, not only in, in, in the mouth, but face, breathe, everything but, plays a role. And then pull it through. Like I said, you have to hammer it from the get-go because it is one of those things that, like you said, oh, the YouTube video takes absolutely. preference here. But the takeaway thing here, I think, thank you very much, guys, mm. is oral hygiene, get that routine going, visit the oral hygienist yes. at least twice a year, the dentist once a year, and look at the types of food that you're eating yeah. Yeah. in general. Thank you very much. I know that there's a lot we can talk about, but Thank it was you. lovely having you guys here. There we go. Still, if you have any questions, please connect with us on social media, 063 on this Health Tuesday.